How's everybody doing? Thank you guys for joining us on Four Corners with Pepper Thomas and my co-host, Mr. Mark A. Walker, Mr. Michael Upshaw, and we have our guest, Mr. William Beckton. I had to get that last name right because, you know, I'll be messing up stuff. I'll be like, Beckton, Beckton, Bicking, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Everyone, thank you for joining us. We, we're calling this the Pop-Up Four Corners show because uh, we started out with doing this one month thing. But then we decided, let's do twice a month. Why not, right? You get a double right. dose. Yeah. Double dose. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to, it's going to be like a pop-up show. So you don't know when we're going to do it unless, you know, it's time for us to promote it and you see it on your, your pages and then we'll do it then. But yeah, this is our last show for the month of March. And we're so excited that you joined us. And if you would please, we beg of you. I'm begging. I beg. I'm not good at begging, but I'm begging now. Please subscribe to Four Corners with Pepper Thomas um, on YouTube. It is four, the number four. See, four, 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 four. That's eight, but this is four. Um, four Corners and then a W Pepper Thomas. Please subscribe to the channel so that way you can comment because we want you to like, comment. We want you to share with everyone because you never know who's going to come through. So first of all, let's just get this party started because we're on a time limit. We were told that we need to have somebody out here in five minutes. You think we can do it? <laughs> not happening. Not today. Not, not, today. not today. Really, I don't think really in this lifetime because I'll be like, I, like, I got to get one more in. I got to get one more in. But I would like to introduce, uh, I'm going to read this because this is, this is like thought provoking. I want to introduce the trend setting billboard chart topping producer, singer, and songwriter, William Beckton. He's an artist who has garnered iconic status and gospel music. I think he was the one that started before Kirk Franklin. That's just my opinion. But as one of the first crossover gospel artists to merge inspirational lyrics with urban sounds, that sounds like a before Kirk Franklin. Introducing William Beckton. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> hey, what's going on, fam? Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome you've been smiling the whole time you've been sitting there you're like oh god uh, maybe i shouldn't give them a, a five minute time limit maybe i should say uh, they need more i was loving it i was loving it i'm like i gotta hire you as my publicist <laughs> <laughs> give me a you can do it all pepper can do it all, can do it all. Right. so yes mark you have some questions for mr Beckton. yes mr william Beckton. be encouraged that's what we call it the be encouraged man um, yeah had a, a very long career um, you're in Charlotte, North Carolina now, no, by Washingtonian, he was DMV area musician. Um, we love you. We still miss you. Um, so tell us what's really been going on the last few years. I know you've been producing things and you have songs up. Tell us more about where you are music, where you are ministry, um, and anything else from that, anything you feel comfortable talking about. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the DMV is always going to be in my blood. I mean, uh, I'm born, raised in Washington, D.C. And um, some years ago, back in um, uh, 04, uh, 05, actually, I relocated from uh, Washington to Charlotte to pastor. Uh, my ministry and my music are paralleled. Uh, in Detroit in uh, 1986, man, is where I really, uh, received the uh, calling of the to pastor and also to do music and it's interesting that those two uh, ministries are parallel it's almost like uh, David uh, David had a two-edged sword he was king but he was also uh, a psalmist and so I've noticed the uh, the parallelisms in my ministry and uh, the challenge of my life has been balancing both anointings so I took a sabbatical from the music industry in uh, 2005 to move into to step into the pastorate, uh, of which uh, that ended uh, led, led me to uh, Charlotte, and then it's almost like I let one go to pick up the other one. So over the last 15 years, is 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 ironic as you were asking me that question to start off, Marcus, because you you into you know my music and you've been so intertwined with all of my my records. You've even been been out with me uh in ministry on in, in many occasions. Uh the last 15 to 20 years has been a balancing act of being able to understand uh, uh what both of those ministries require and uh 
and it, it is a it is a lifelong balancing act because uh, music uh, can go multiple ways. You can go in the ministry of music and you can go into the industry of music. And those two entities are oxymoronic. They they uh, they war against each other. So, you know, balancing uh, is where I've been on for the last 15 to 20 years. Oh, wow. Hmm. So tell me this, your your inspiration from writing the songs. I know you're in a different place in life now, and I think. Um, as we get older, we think and process things differently. But coming from, you know, just being realistic, coming from that celebrity type um, the musician world that you were in, that you're still in, that you're still part of, how was that? Um, how did you translate that to, to ministry without compromising the gospel? You know, so I mean, I see some people are trying to be happy on both sides, but we know that, you know, sometimes, because I'm still a musician, sometimes you want to entertain. Yeah. And that's the reality of what you do. And it isn't, I don't call it a sin, but no. it's still in the reality of trying to dramatize the situation where you're trying to make people feel what you're feeling. And it's not always coming from the spiritual base of what scripture says, because sometimes we allow God to move upon us. But again, you are forced to entertain because people give you contracts and they expect, right. there's an expectation when they come to, you No, know, whether you go into a Marvin Sapp, concert that's an expectation though he may not be right. the entertaining mentally but you know there's an expectation when you go to these type of concerts but yet when sure, he preaches sure. he's that person because you know he's a minister and i so it's the same sure. thing i'm i used that as an example i don't know marvin but i know you well so right. it's the same thing right. how, how 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 what is your your frame of mind when you're trying to keep the balance between the both because sometimes as a supporter of music i think we've all had that moment where we're like I could have stayed home tonight. That that wasn't really a good concert. I'd rather hear them preach than right. sing. Right. I think it's. I think you just said it. I mean, um, it it took me a while to learn who I am, why I am, and what I'm called to do. Um, and there is, I think that there are artists that specialize in the industry of gospel music. But see, the when you use that term, the industry of gospel music, that's oxymoronic because industry and gospel, they don't go to God. How are you going to industrialize the gospel? You know, Jesus said you're going to love one and hate the other. See, wow. so uh, the, that's the industry of gospel music. But see, the ministry of gospel music is that that we do for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And, and, and that is a completely different uh, dichotomy. It took me years to learn who I am. You know, uh, I'm a ministry gift. You know, uh, do I write music that is, that is urban friendly? Absolutely. Uh, is my audience urban friendly? Yes, but I write traditional music. I've even embedded, uh, uh, embarked upon uh, writing music from uh, the love songs because I went through a period of my life where I went through a divorce and I had to see life from a completely different angle than I saw it before. So you have to realize who you are and why you are and what you are called to do. When I realized that uh, who I am is ministering to the brokenhearted, those who are hurt, lonely, going through, then I recognize that uh, like the matrix, there are times that I have to step in the matrix yeah. But I'm not of the matrix, <laughs> you know, and so I step in, but then I step back out because uh, what is predominant in my life is the gospel. Now, the last part of what you said, I think that every gospel artist and every um, every person in 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 religious music period has to understand this. And this is the problem that I have in, in, in our industry today. We are birthing artists that really do not understand uh, who are not really grounded theologically. We don't really understand really who God is and really what God's desire is for our music. And so then when we don't understand that, we get all within the multiplicity of, of, of evils. The Bible is three tiered as it relates to our sacrifice. And every artist needs to understand that. What do I mean by three tiered? We see things as good, bad, you know, uh, evil, good. No, but the Bible doesn't. The Bible sees things in three tiers. And what do I mean by a good course in the Levit the book of Leviticus teaches us that teaches us that. Number one, there is unclean, then there is clean, and then there is holy. And what you were talking about, Mark, is we there are a lot of things that are in the music industry that are just unclean. They're just unclean. We are as simple as wrong. OK, we, we ain't supposed to be doing that. That's just that music is just unclean. But then you can take something that's unclean and, and make it clean. In other words, uh, it's a good thing, 
but yet and still it's not a holy thing unclean clean and holy the thing that's holy is the thing that's sanctified unto god and when i realize that there is a flow of music that i that comes out of me that has to be sanctified unto, unto god that that's the that's the purity that's the that's that that part that can't be contaminated now there are good things that i do there are clean things that i do but when i do things unto the lord those things are sanctified they're set apart for a holy purpose oh wow great great and the reason why i did use marvin sap not just because i'm a fan or whatever and i know the producers and all that me and aaron Lindsay are great friends um i should say we work together with stephen ford um because i'd say you you both kind of remind me somewhat the same because he's a he's a great preacher but then mm -hmm. he translate great his preacher. songs yeah. into you know from the preaching side of things mm -hmm. and i think that that's that's the difference to make it between me you know when i hear the song be encouraged it came out at a time where i think a lot of people whether they save or unsaved need to hear that message and then yeah. you go to a transition i'm and though he's not this is interviews about you i'm giving the reason why i spoke about marvin sap when his song mm -hmm. came out never would have made it it yeah. was for the whole world it was it was a message for right. everyone you know what i mean it right. wasn't just yeah you know how we do in church exactly. this one's only for me this ain't for y'all it's like god gives right. us something because he say i ran on the just and unjust so right. thank you for explaining that you know that and that's it i'm not gonna ask more questions i don't know <laughs> time <laughs> um, i don't know if pepper wants to go through the song or mike asked yeah. a question but but thank you so much i think that what you just explained gave a lot of information that was needed thank you sir yeah thank you william for being uh transparent because not many people would touch on that uh you know the worlds that we live in because it's reality um you can't get away from it um right. so let's let's go into a song since we spoke about be encouraged this is the song that every choir was trying to sing oh i'm sorry <laughs> they were singing it i'm sorry yes um, they weren't they weren't trying to sing it they were singing it they were singing it. Listen, you said that you, you said that i didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> or, or or what they did was they put it on and they let you sing it. They like, <laughs> you got nobody to play it or sing it just let williams sing it so everyone is being heard acting right here on uh four corners is pepper thomas put those hands together all across the building tonight let the devil know that you encouraged. Let him know that you encouraged. Let him know. Hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight, but somebody may be crying, but I come to let you know that God can make it all right. <laughs> It's impossible to see, but God is going to work it out if you just believe. Remember this one thing while you're going through. If God delivered Daniel, guess what? He'll do the same for you, 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 you. Hey. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on. You make it all right. Said it in his word. No matter what going on, you make it all right. That's what he said. That's what he said. He told me. He told me. Stand strong. Stand strong. 
and dry your weeping eyes. Cause joy comes in the morning and everything is gonna be, gonna be all right. Foul. Yes, sir. So when you're listening to that, what place does that take you to? Because I'm sure you don't listen to the, the song often. Or do you? I'll mute your mic. You're on mute. <laughs> I've listened to it more. I'm sorry. I've listened to it more in the last 20 years than than ever before. Uh I don't listen to my music often. You know, um, mm. I believe that what what you what other artists have has mm -hmm. it's for me mm -hmm. and what i have is for them and when we share from that perspective then we get into the manifold wisdoms of god if you just look at your own revelation and just are consumed by your own revelation you won't be exposed to the fullness because god only gives you a part mm -hmm. uh but in the last 15 or 20 years I've had to listen to my music from a different perspective, especially that that particular record, especially the the broken line of music that I've written. Um, I've written three broken records uh, because I've been in a crisis situation in my life, losing both parents, divorce, and pretty much literally losing everything that I that I have over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, which was part of the path that I had to take for the anointing of God that is functional in my life. So there were times where my circle of influence was gone. The people that, was, that were speaking into my life, they were no longer there. Mm -hmm. And I was in a city by which I don't have any family. And, you know, you don't, you're not as trusting when you go through certain uh, traumatic events, but they are, they are ordained by God. And it's almost like the Lord led you this way so you can uh, experience these things and be and learn to depend on him. So I'm saying all that to say, I had to listen to the music that God, the Lord gave me because I knew where that music came from. Mm -hmm. I wrote it, you know, mm -hmm. the Lord allowed me, the Lord wrote it, but I pinned it. Mm -hmm. So I, I could trust the revelation of it. I knew, you know, the, it was almost like I was prophesying to myself. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to being encouraged, it's, it's a prophetic word that's for me first. Hmm. Uh, okay. I was just listening to it there, and I, I and it, I went back to, to 
when I actually wrote the song. I mean, I, I allowed my mind to play those, the, the, the ghost of the remember, you remember when you were sitting in that room and off of off of Rhode Island Avenue, you know, between this and, and you didn't have anything. And, mm -hmm. it, it, and, and I gave you that revelation. Mm -hmm. you, you remember the night when you recorded and the great vocalists that were a part of that record, uh, wow. Cliff Jones that was uh, leading yes. and okay. James Washington. And, and here's the thing about that. Uh, every piece to that all those singers that sung that record the musicians the production it took every piece to come together to make that god used every piece it wasn't just my writing it just wasn't uh the lead vocals or the secondary lead vocalist but it was all the pieces that came along and i remember uh the recording of it uh i was Thinking about James Washington in particular when I was listening to the song was James is just an amazing singer. Mark uh, uh, knows this as well. If you take James out of that record, out of being encouraged, the song has a huge hole in it. It's not a hit. If you take a cliff away from that record, it's not a hit. Hmm. If you take the musicians away from that record, it's not a hit. Hmm. If the mistakes that occurred in the live aspect of that record, see, it starts the way it started or the record was not the way it started live. There was some mistakes. So in the production of it, I had to go back and put, put take the end and make the end the beginning. But isn't that just like God was, was for first shall be last and was last shall be first. Yeah. So it took all those components to come together. And I'm sitting here listening to it and going, if you'd have went left with this, it wouldn't have been what it was. If you went right with this, it would have been what it takes. God makes hits. Bro. And, um, and that's where my mind was. I'm sorry, I took the long road around. Oh, you're you fine. You're fine. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're fine. So, Michael, you had something for William? Well, oh, yes. You know what, Pastor Becton. I, I want to thank you, as the world does, with such a great song. Uh, meant a lot to me. And I, I was just sitting here thinking, wow, 29 years ago, 1995, I was in Houston, Texas. So one of the three songs that I heard all the time was at a Bible Institute there. And my roommate was Riley B. King Jr., B.B. King's son. <laughs> right? Wow. So wow. We, yeah. Wow. And the three songs we would play was Be Encouraged, Open Up My Heart, Yolanda Adams, yep. and Pur Purpose by Design, <laughs> uh, Fred Hammond. Yep. Those are the songs. Wow. Now, 28 years later, last year, I remember, and I think you, Mark, and I, we had this conversation in this dark period of my life, you know, things change. And I had gone to visit my daughter and an hour ride took two hours to come back home. I don't know what happened. And it, it's just, I still don't remember what happened, but for some reason, the encouraged was playing and it looped. So for two hours, that's all I heard, hmm. and 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 I and I and I I listen to it right now. I still listen to that song, and again, you know, I just want to thank you for allowing God to bless us with with such a great great song that that will be here forever, even after we're gone. It's one of those songs, and uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you went to a prestigious school, the uh, Duke Ellington. A performing art school, and you have people like Michelle and Dave Cello and Dave yeah. Chappelle and Johnny yeah. Gill, and yeah. so during that time, how did how were you able to manage uh, being in ministry, knowing that you were called to to Christ, and 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 how how did you manage both of those those because that's a totally different world there, and uh, completely completely different world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, in, in gospel, uh, I, I just did uh, a documentary because um, most of the people in the industry of gospel music that, I, that I've uh, come to know over the years, m many of the artists, because uh, I, I sort of kind of march to the beat of, I won't say my own drum, but march to the beat of the drum that the Lord gave me for the Lord's purpose. So I don't walk in a lot of circles. So my background, most of the industry doesn't know, but my background is classical music. You know, I went to the University of the District of Columbia to major in voice. So what I do is work with singers, uh, develop singers. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a producer, but um, I have a system of music that I teach, uh, vocal coaching, vocal uh, technique, vocal uh, styling. Um, 
songwriting is my passion, but working with singers. Uh, so, uh, you know, Latin, German, Latin, Italian, the French, you know, non-French, dry, far, follow, and the armor, road, so, no, that's my background. Oh, wow. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> when, when you said Ellington, that was a huge, Duke was a huge part of my background, the University of the District of Columbia was, uh, because, you know, that's what I do well, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't until I got to college in my third year where I realized that all of the investment that I was putting into the voice and the study of the voice mm -hmm. was for no i actually didn't realize i did realize it then because the lord spoke to me that he was going to touch my hands and my music would go across the world people would say that my music is of the devil but your music is of me and the same day the lord gave me that word in detroit michigan at this conference he called me to pastor same day so both words so i knew the direction of my life musically where it was going and i knew that all that i was learning and i had learned concerning the voice and studying European classical music, that that I was going to take that and apply that to my gospel. So what I learned was for, you know, like Moses, Moses, Moses went, uh, was, was educated in the e Egyptian educational system. Then he spent time in Midian away, but then the Lord does what? He brings Moses back to Egypt to free his wow. people. Now, he comes back to Egypt understanding the mindset of the Egyptians. He understands the mindset because what he was raised in. The, in so wow. uh, I look at my training and the things that I learned both uh, theologically and, and educationally, and I apply all that to my gospel. Um, and I applied what I learned at Ellington. It's interesting you said Michelle, because Michelle and I graduated together. Oh, uh, really? we both were the class of 1986. So if she wow. hope she doesn't hear this because I'm telling on our age. <laughs> <laughs> She'll hear it. Well, there, another thing that, that I wanted to talk to you about, you know, it's it's amazing because uh I know that you are also involved uh in uh organization that deals with autism and i remember that i was working with a, a young lady uh miss marcel williams and she has a book out uh saving isaiah uh, about her son yes, and i still remember this day uh as i'm listening as the book is being read uh during the book one of the readings the gentleman that the young man spoke about his favorite song is be encouraged and all I could do was just sit there, I couldn't move or say anything. So the next day I called Mark and I told him what was going on. And we spoke, got everybody on the phone. It was a terrible yes. day that day. Yes. Everybody was I praying remember. God. Yes. That was wow. a very emotional day. day. Yes. But the thing that really got me is that you said you were sitting in the car, you were going in the gym and then you just decided not to go. And I guess the Holy Spirit just put you on hold for a minute and you were doing some work with something with the organization at that same time, not knowing that this phone call kept, was coming in. So could you explain to you know us what exactly it is, what you do? A, a, another God <laughs> moment, man. Um, I, I, I'm so blown uh, away at uh, how God is um, involved in every aspect of our lives. And, mm -hmm. and some of the things that we dismiss that roll around in the back of our of our minds if we if we just give an opportunity to to god for god to move he will uh i deal with uh, uh autism uh people who who uh uh who have as uh buried all those kind of asperger all those kinds of uh disabilities and um i'm well acquainted with uh with, with that so I happened to this particular day, I pulled up to the gym and um, I don't know why, I knew I needed to start the day. You know, when I pull up, it's, it's time to get out and get in there so I can get out with the rest of the day. But I was just sitting in the car. I said, let me pick up and do some paperwork here. And um, and, and I have a, a particular young man who just loves to uh, be around the music. He, lo he loves uh, when I go into the uh, radio station and listen to some of the music, uh, uh, my music and so forth. So I said, I, let me pick up the, the phone and, and uh, I pick up and do some paperwork. I knew I need to contact him. And, and reach out to him and then i mark called me and uh when i heard this story it just broke me down because 
I know we you all were in tears prior, but I was in tears while you were telling me because I'm looking at what God did 30 years ago. Mm. I think his reception. Reception with that. Yeah. Can't hear you. So let me do this. Let me uh let me show this comment. Uh we can't hear you, okay. William. We can't hear you. Um can't so let, hear me, you. let me show this comment. So Marcel Williams says, Thank you so much for that song, Pastor Beckton. Beckton Beckton. My son is a 28-year-old man with autism. This is the favorite song, and it has brought us through this journey. Um and then uh, Marcel Williams also says, thank you, Michael, for the invite to listen to the show. Hearing the song brings an amazing peace through any storm and blessings. So this is necessary. This platform is necessary. Wow. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. So, um, do me a favor, William or uh, William. Michael Lamarck, text uh, William to let him know that we cannot hear him. I just did. I just did. did? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. So let's let's play, um, let's play another song. Yeah. Let's play another song. Let's uh, okay. wait for him to come back right. and um, let's play. Uh, let's play till the end right here on the Hot Pepper Show. Oh, Four Corners of Pepper Thomas. There I go. I'm messing up, y'all. Y'all can like <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> I'll make you text messages. <laughs> I'm, texting, I'm texting him. Make sure. Okay, cool. Uh, here is till the end right here on Four Corners of Pepper Thomas. Just because the sun won't shine doesn't mean that I'm not weak. Oh, you prayed and nothing changed Doesn't mean that I can't hear you <laughs> Gotta hold to my promise Cause I do what I said I would, yeah Joy comes in the morning Just believe I'm working it up for your news So trust in Jesus. Just because the sun don't shine, it doesn't mean that I can't keep you. And though you pray and nothing changes. Doesn't mean that I'm not with you. You gotta hold on to my promise. Cause I'll do just what I said I would. Joy comes in the morning. Just believe I'm working it out. Yeah. 
So you guys, that was music by yeah. William Beckton. And y'all might not know this. I found this out when I interviewed Kenny Lattimore a few years ago. Uh, yeah, he yeah. was singing with you. Oh, yeah. And they That's found what? him. And now he's doing R&B. Yes, that was, <laughs> that, was the, that was a part of the interview. I was like, hey, you got a song with William Beckton? He's like, you've been researching, Pepper. And I says, I've been researching. So, mm -hmm. yeah. He, Kenny sung like three songs on that record. See, mm -hmm. that what people don't understand about that first broken the Lord has blessed me to work with some amazing artists in my career. I'm serious. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, some amazing, I, I, I've done a record, I produced a song for Joe Lagan, uh, mm -hmm. worked on a project mm -hmm. with MC Hammer, I've, I've mm -hmm. worked uh, with uh, Rance, uh, Rance Allen, you know, I had opportunity to, to, to reap, but that first recording in washington dc mm -hmm. in 1994 <laughs> at southern baptist church washington dc that night was just an it was like we say in gospel music it was right oily that night uh, <laughs> I, had, I had i had kenny Latim, kenny Lattimore, right Mark, some of the, the city's most at that time yes. greatest singers kenny Lattimore, mm -hmm. the, the the great lois tillery who's gone on to be with the lord dr charles phillips Jeff Waddy, uh, Cliff Jones, oh. James Washington, uh, Mark Freeman. It was just a Scott Moore. It was as a great, it was a every song, every singer, and every singer, and that Kenny Lattimore. So, mm -hmm. Kenny, you and I, I used to be the minister of music of, uh, uh, at the same church where Kenny was the worship leader. Mm -hmm. So, you, 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 so you, you can easily get a big head as, as the, as the minister of music. And a songwriter when yeah. Kenny Lattimore is singing all your songs every week. I mean, because Kenny can make a bad song sound good. Oh, yeah, I always. The song was good. Because when Kenny get his hand on a song, he gonna take the song to a whole nother level. <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. I have to get out of here. Yeah. Like he got. Okay. Yeah, and I. And, no, go and ahead, Mister. And I did want him to finish, if he could, real quick about the uh, of the organization that you work with. Yes, and, yes, and, yes, and yes, and that experience, mm -hmm. that experience. Um, yes. So when when I recognized what God was doing uh, that day, and mm -hmm. Mike, I had no idea that you were involved, uh, um, you know, with the the whole concept of autism. Uh, it, it it just really blessed me, man, uh, and how that the Lord was using something that he put in my mind 30 years ago my heart 30 years ago of ministering to the broken those who are hurting lonely uh going through down and out but there's some mm -hmm. up and in folk that are broken too and right. uh re-establishing this anointing this song to a completely different generation yeah. uh this young man uh wasn't even around when i wrote the song you know and so uh it, it blessed me uh that our efforts in ministry are affecting those uh and and with all kinds of disabilities mm -hmm. uh those who are uh struggling with uh, uh mental health issues because we're living in the time i wrote broken and, and being encouraged from one perspective uh through the eyes of what was going on in 1994 the tulsa oklahoma bombing and things of, na of, of that nature but some 30 years later we're still dealing with those types of things magnified. And so what, what happened when you all called me that morning, Mike, I began to see uh, how what God did then is still what he's doing now. Wow. What was old is still new. God mm -hmm. is outside of time. And what we we look uh, look at things, oh, no, that's dated. No, when God speaks a word over your life, it's a word over your life then, it's a word over your life now, and it'll be a word over your life for your tomorrow. Mm, amen. And amen. now I feel like preaching. I want to preach. <laughs> wow. Wait, 
Where's the plate? Is this the plate? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the plate? Hey, where's the plate? <laughs> well, we thank you so much for joining us, uh, for taking the time to be on Four Corners of Pepper Thomas along with Michael and Mark. Um, greatly appreciate it. And uh, thank you. where are you going to be? You're welcome. Where are you going to be in the, the near future so people can uh, support you? And then also, um, we want to play your latest single in the morning, which is a remake yeah. of Joy in the Morning. Um, but yes, tell everyone where you will be soon. So what we are doing now, we have launched out on this massive endeavor. We're doing the William Beckham Old School, New School Praise Jam. Uh, mm -hmm. We're starting the tour in the DMV on uh, April the 25th at the Carlisle Room and April the 26th, uh, the 26th, 6th, I'm sorry, at Keystone Corner in Baltimore. And it's a re I'm reuniting with my band. I mean, reuniting with the cats that put me on the map years ago. So don't tell anyone, Pepper, don't tell anyone, but this dude in Washington, D.C., this bass player, this dude by the name of Mark Walker that's been on every record that I've done. No, he's playing with everybody, but he's going to be rocking with me on this tour. And we're doing it in a huge Is he way. good, though? I Is mean, he good? Is he uh, good? Uh, I mean, this Joker can play everything. You know, he really, he is the band himself, you know. Well, does, but he, no, we, does he play and eat chicken at the same time? Does he play and eat chicken? Does he play the bass and eat chicken? Oh, it's it's it's, it's, it's gonna be. Listen, it, I'm so I'm so I'm so excited. I cannot even. I can't wait. Uh, a lot. Uh, all all of my band for you know for back in the day, we're we're getting together to do this tour. And many folks that that uh, used to see my live set in the '90s, uh, I used to rehearse at a spot in in uh, Kensington with with the with 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 pops. We call them pops, but the Godfather that was Chuck Brown. So I championed in the '90s. Uh, go go on a lot of uh, gospel go go on a lot of the uh, uh, gospel stages, and so those that didn't really understand uh, a go go on the gospel, like what was that? What is that? Is that that DC go go? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's go go. Yeah, that, yeah, it's gospel go go. You know, and, and, and we and, and we rocked it on the on the stage. I remember, I remember, I remember the first time I, I did a date with Kurt. Kurt Franklin came up to me after and said, Is that that Google? I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and and you need to stay away from it. I don't want you getting nowhere around this here. <laughs> we, we, this is this a DC thing. So we're gonna rock that in a major way. Uh I'm doing some of the old school classics from back in the day that some of us forgot about, but they were songs that that helped mold my my uh my my perspective of music. So it's a non-stop 70 minute set. Wow. Uh, the first set don't stop. I mean, we plan for 30 minutes. Uh, I've got uh, some amazing talent. My Shetta Parker out of Raleigh is going to be with me. John Tillery uh, in, in D.C. He's going to be on the day. He's going to have a wonderful time. This, I'm excited about this this, yes. this tour, and I'm excited about uh, just the fellas. You know, 30 years later, these guys are still playing with the greats, and, and they're going to come along and share their gift, gift with little old me again. So I, I feel honored. But they, they're making me feel like I'm somebody again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you got to go. It is 15 yeah, it, yeah, he's got to get that train. <laughs> if I don't get that, that train going, that train is going to leave. I don't care how much I say be encouraged. It's not stopping for me. <laughs> Bless you, man. God, thank you so much. Thank you so Listen, much. Thank y'all. God, thank you so much for letting me come on. And I want to let let everybody know uh, that uh, you might be going through. Uh, and no matter where you are in your life, Mm -hmm. Right now, I want to make sure I'm looking directly uh, into this camera. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what challenges you have, no matter how much the devil is telling you in your mind that you're not going to make it or that it's passed by, your life has passed you by, the fact that you're alive and the fact that you can hear me and see me today, it is not over. Mm -hmm. I want you to be encouraged mm -hmm. because in the morning, in the morning, if you can mm -hmm. just make it to the morning, Hmm, but I feel emotional right now. I promise you, mm -hmm. your sun is going to shine again and you're going to smile again. God bless you. I love all of you. And thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show. You're welcome. Love you too, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. Now we got real sophisticated with our praise and worship. But my daddy was a Carolina country boy. And he told me this. We really 
was moving, moving, so I got down on my knees. So I got down on my knees, let me tell you what it did for me. So the day the party had me, along with all the friends, but along with all the kids, it's like, 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 That is music by William Beckton, the latest, entitled In the Morning. So, how y'all doing? Oh, we're doing, doing all right. Doing well. Doing great. I see. <laughs> I'm Pepper Thomas. I see. That was a great show, huh? Yes. Great show. Absolutely. Great show. Great show. Absolutely. Yeah. Very informative. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. informative. So, um, we thank you all for joining Four Corners with Pepper Thomas, along with yeah, the host yeah. Mark A. Walker and Michael Upshaw. You know, we got to put that A in the middle of Mark. Thank you so much, Pepper. That means one day he'll explain me. it. Who knows why? He just <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Pepper. Pepper. Know, and you can see Pepper loves pe messing with me and my my A in my middle of my name. That's my <laughs> initial. But it's and okay. Why, why got to be the first letter of the alphabet? Hey, hey that's I, what I want to know. Got had that conversation with my parents. I mean, I don't have anything to do with that. You know, you're Pepper Thomas, so you know. Okay. So, <laughs> well, well, Mark, don't don't feel bad, man, because uh, maybe I'll I'll join you because my middle initial is A too. So okay, we, yeah, hey. So <laughs> what's with this A thing on the East Coast, folks? Yeah, everybody knows <laughs> English way. Like, it's, I think it's an East Coast thing because it's not in the South. It's not in the South. Are you sure? It. I don't know nobody with a middle name A. You don't. <laughs> you, I'm sure you do. There has to be someone there with a middle name A. No, I don't. I Don't can't be the only Mark Anthony on this planet. I know better than that. You might be. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> we thank y'all for joining us. Thank you for coming. We uh, want you to subscribe to Four Corners with Pepper Thomas. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, share the video, like the video, comment on the video so we can get folks on this platform. We will be doing this twice a month as a pop-up. So you'll 
uh, find out when we do a post on when we will be on. But if you subscribe to the channel, you'll know because it'll let you know when we are going live. So yeah. the key is to subscribe to the channel. So just tell everyone on YouTube, it is for the number four corner, C-O-R-N-E-R-S W Pepper Thomas. And, um, yes. and it's so, free. And, and it's it, free. It's free. Like they said, free 99 is free 99. <laughs> Yours for free. So, free. Yeah, go out and, and do that. So um, also, uh, Michael, who is coming up on next month? Well, we're waiting for a call. It'll be a big surprise. So that's all I can say. All right. Sounds good to me. I was like, <laughs> go ahead and tell them. We just got, we don't have the date, but we have the person. They might want to Google the name, but I guess if you don't want to tell, I'm not going to twist your arm. So, okay. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. So subscribe y'all four corners with Pepper Thomas on YouTube and tell your friends, tell everybody. Okay. So, uh, all minds clear. All, all minds are clear. clear. Okay. This is Pepper Thomas along with my co-host Mark A. Walker and Michael Upshaw signing off from the intersection of music and culture. Y'all like that? This is four corners. See you next month. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. 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 God bless you. God bless you.